Hello, everyone. Welcome to Switchcraft, the Fingerboard podcast. My name is Jana, and this time I have Benny from Texas here. He's uh, the guy behind Good Vibes FB. Hey, what, what's going on, guys? Uh, my name is Benny. I run Good Vibes Fingerboarding. Uh, we're based out of Dallas, Texas. And I'm uh, extremely excited to be on here with you. Yeah, and I'm extremely excited to have you here. And for people who don't know Good Vibes, um, I think it's something that's really lacking in the scene. And I'm really excited every time I I see something along those lines. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, can you uh, just do a brief explanation of what Good Vibes is and why it's different than most fingerboard companies? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so what it is, it's Good Vibes fingerboarding, and it's attached to an RC drift track. Uh, both of the hobbies complement each other very well, I would say. Um, as far as the scale aspect, um, you want to make it as realistic as possible with fingerboarding, you want to do it with RC. It's the same thing, especially for the for when you're shooting a video and whatnot. Uh, Good Vibes actually started off as an RC drift team about, oh, maybe about seven or eight years ago. And uh, a lot of the guys who were doing the drifting at the time were doing fingerboarding. There was maybe two or three of us. And the owner of the shop decided to build us a table just to kind of get us out of the way, kind of get us, you know, our own little spot. And uh, it just slowly grew into what we have now. More people started getting into it. Uh, each hobby has pulled people from itself. So, you know, we get people that come in from the RC side and they look over and they see what we're doing and they pick one up and they're instantly in love with it and, and vice versa. Like I said, it seems to go very well with it. And everyone that goes or walks into those doors and they don't do either or of those hobbies, they're still just blown away. And the feeling that we get when you see that look on their faces, it's, it, it completely makes it all worth it. Yeah, I, I can imagine since I'm a local at the Aussie Berlin shop, I know that look from people who are uh, in there for the first time <laughs> and yeah, anything about yeah. fingerboarding. They're like, Whoa. oh man, their their jaws are on the ground. I mean, it's we hear it nonstop. I'm sorry to cut you off, but no we, hear it, we hear it nonstop. Like, man, I've been fingerboarding since high school, and I've been doing it wrong. You know, they'll show us their tech deck, and then they see all the, like we always hear the same thing as far as obstacles wise. Like, you know, I, used, I sit on my desk and I have this loaf that I've had for 10 years. I've never seen a plaza where I actually have to walk if I want to fingerboard on it. It's, it's, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's awesome. Like I said, it's, we spend a lot of late nights there. Um, mm -hmm. We have, yeah, a, same yeah same it, it, it makes, oh, I could, I can only imagine you guys have, I mean, a shitload of spots. <laughs> yeah. I, I and, think that's the technical premise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And we have three and, you know, the way we build them is, is a little different. I don't know if it's to everybody's liking, but it fits our style very well. And it makes it to where it's really easy to change. So every month or so, uh, me and the genius I call Gio, uh, a buddy of mine, he, uh, we go through and we change it all up or repaint it and we're good to go for another month. That's that way cool. that, that yeah, I mean, you get those faces all the time, you know, every, uh -huh. so even, even the guys that come on a regular basis, they might just not make it a weekend. They pop in the next weekend and that's a whole nother setup. And instantly you see the look in their eyes, like, okay, I can get this clip here. I can get this clip here. I can get this clip here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like I, I've been going for, uh, to the Aussie shop for almost five years, I think. And yeah, some a lot of the parts have stayed the same. Like, yeah, yeah, and that's what we and it's, we try to yeah. stay away from that. Yeah, that's that, that's a cool philosophy. Like at the Azi shop, we have like the the spot of the day uh, table, which is mm -hmm. just a, a basically an empty black river table. So the same ground as all the black river tables, but yeah, nothing on it. And yeah, then a huge collection of ramps and there we build spot for a day or two or yeah, until the next person decides to build a new spot. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it's funny you bring that up because our, the way we build is influenced by that spot of the day. I remember seeing it when I first started getting into it heavily 
I remember seeing that, you know, the spot of the day. And then I was wondering what it was. And then they finally posted a shot from the backside where you can see the shelving and you can see all the obstacles in it. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was genius. I was like, that's, that's genius. You can make, you know, not a spot of the day, but we can make it a spot of the week or a spot yeah. of the month or whatever. And earlier in the good vibes page, uh, you know, you'd have to scroll way down there and you, you'll see that we'll make a spot and it'll say spot of the week. And just so we can keep it going, just so we can keep it fresh. Um, I, I love everything Timo does. I, I, I look at what he does and I try to follow the same vibe that he has out there. Not only for fingerboarding, but you know, for, for the, the, the gathering place for the community. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the gathering place is something that's really, uh, really important, uh, at least for, for the Aussie shop. Cause like I have friends, like I have one friend who's notorious for running late and he will, <laughs> he will regularly come, come to the shop at 8 PM where the shop usually closes. <laughs> but yeah, like we all know if, if we show up, like if a couple of us are there on the weekend, it usually goes on like till midnight or oh like, yeah. And, as long as anyone who has a key is willing to stay there it, and yeah, if they have a good time, it's more likely that it will stay open longer. Oh, it, it's, we have, uh, we, so we have a group of guys that are like that, that we close at eight. Well, the, the technically we're supposed to close at eight, but I have my real job to go to. So I, I usually show up about five of the days that I'm there. So I feel like if I close at eight, I'm not giving anyone that's there to fingerboard enough time to actually fingerboard because the fingerboarders don't get there till later anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm usually there till 10. And then, like you said, I have a group of guys who only come at eight o'clock or later. So like on any given Monday, we're there till midnight on any given Friday, we might be there till two or three in the morning. Yeah, the, the weekends are usually the, the long, the long days yeah, for us. Yeah, and that's what, you know, it's like you said, especially if the session's going really good or, or even if you're just sitting around hanging out, you know, if the vibes yeah, are good and, exactly. you know, the, why, why cut it short? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and usually, like, Timo has something to do anyway. Like, he, he just, like, spends uh, time, like, doing orders, uh, doing paperwork, like all, all the boring stuff that needs to be done <laughs> yeah. that you can't do when, when a bunch of customers are in the shop. Yep. Yep. And then when you're done, all the homies are gone. Yeah. So you have to, so you have to stay late or else, you know, you don't, you don't get to play. See, and you guys yeah. get, it's so, I'm so jealous of you guys. You have ASI out there. Yeah, That's but still, so rad. Yeah, but still, <laughs> I, I fucking love that there are more and more like, brick and mortar stores popping up. Cause I, th I think that's, that's like a big step. Uh, there are so many like online retailers or board companies and like actually having a physical space where people can go to, like, I, I can probably, I probably know every place in the world that's like that. Like, yeah, and I probably know more than, or know of more than the average fingerboard. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Yeah, and that's and that's what we want, you know. Like you said, I mean, exactly what you said. There's so many, and I'm not taking anything away from these online stores. I mean, yes, there are, there's a lot of them here too in the states, and we can easily do the same thing that everybody else does. But we had the we had the opportunity present itself where we can actually, you know, like you said, a little brick and mortar spot. Somewhere you can actually walk in and, you know, my selection might not be that of your online store, no. but you can go in there physically and pick it up. And then when you're done, you can just turn around and, you know, have your session and jam at it for a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah, no, I, and I, I get I, a lot of customers who love it. And I get, you know, I, I know I'm not, I can't gouge my customers. I can't expect my customers to buy everything from me. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I, I focus on having a good stock, a good enough stock to where you can come in and build yourself a beginner complete or like a professional setup. But yeah. mostly, well, mostly what we focus on is I want you to buy your toy and I want you to go play with it. And I want you to have a good ass time. with it. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that, that's, that's the, uh, like that, that's what it's about. Like, correct, correct, correct. 
Uh, if you just sell the thing to to make money, like, yeah, I mean, you you give people access to the thing, but other than that, you're not really doing anything for the. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you got to give them access to it. You, you know, you got to yeah. put that place there. But and even with the, even with that, I, I I'm. I don't know if it's good or bad or, or, or whatnot, but I'm new to all this, you know, especially having my own little store or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is something I've always wanted to do, and uh, I'm glad that this kind of gave me a little, this little sliver of space to slide in and, you know, try to work a little something in there. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's great. We love it. Uh, like I said, the face is coming in. It's, 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 who would have thought that fingerboarding would bring you so much happiness, not even... Not even having to fingerboard, you know, just yeah. watching everybody else enjoy it. And uh, when when did you start having like fingerboarding officially at uh, at the RC track? Like, is, is it something that's relatively recent, or um, it start? It, we started having it. So we've been open right now about three months. Prior to that, we were closed for about a year, and mm -hmm. then. And then before that, it was open for about four or five years. The the last year being the first year that we brought fingerboarding into it. And uh, oh, okay. And and just because we noticed that more pe that more people were just asking about the fingerboarding side, and we didn't have a store or we didn't have anything, they were just asking us, the guys that were doing it. And the owner of the shop, a really good friend of mine, his name is uh, Stephen Platt. We call him Platt. He runs the RC side. I run the, the fingerboard side. Uh, he noticed that a lot of people were asking for it. And he, we sat down one day and he's like, hey, man, you know, this is something that we might be able to get people in here just to help keep the doors open. We should give it a shot. Mm. And, it, and it just slowly grew. It just, it, honestly, it just slowly grew from there. Like, I, I, there was nothing we really did or, like, I even sit back and I'm, like, still mind blown that. I, you know, we're to where we at already. And especially during the current time, like, and it's especially during the current time. And it's, it's been, it's just been crazy. <laughs> like I still can't wrap my head around it completely. Um, we, we noticed more people coming in, like I said, so he built us that table. Um, I knew that it was beginning to take off. Like you can see the early signs of there's a little bit of, people are asking about it, you know, mm -hmm. there's, a little, there's a little interest growing. So I knew I needed to make a few things accessible, at least to us. So the first thing we wanted to get was a grip. And of course, what grip do you want to get? You only want to get cat. It's, it's the best. It, so like, I, it's, it's the one thing in fingerboarding where I don't use anything else. And like, I, I think I mentioned it in the last episode. I really need to hit up Kafa if she can, if I can buy like one of those really big packs from her, like <laughs> yeah. not because I want any discount or anything, just because like I'm, I have way too many setups and I go through grip like really fast, like okay. usually about three weeks. Sheesh. And, and I currently have like 12 ish setups and yeah, I, uh, I like I, I try new boards all the time, get a new board, need new grip, and like I constantly run out of tape. Like I, if I have only one of the five packs left in my fingerboard box, I'm like, okay, next time I'm at the Aussie shop, I have to pick up a new pack. Because you already know you're gonna go through it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just the it's it's just the best, and I've tried, you know, I've tried other grips, and then. I swear to God, it's just the best. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, I tried like pretty much every tape there is. And there are a, f a few ones that I think are good alternatives, but yeah, none of them are what I would like in a grip. But yeah. Ag agreed, agreed. Have you tried her new, that new high tide? Um, that one I've only tried with a friend, but I do have... I I have one actually lying around here, one of one of the engraved ones, but I think it's the uh, Azi Berlin shop one that I have. But if, yeah, if, not... you get a, if you get a chance, 
Get a sheet of that high tide. Now. That stuff is. That, that's the, the one with the complete laser all through, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think I would like that. Like, I, I have a friend of mine who has that. Like, in fact, uh, he was the one who I started the podcast with two years ago. Oh, okay. Sound Fear on uh, Instagram, Bene. And, uh, like, he's very obsessed with his, with, like, he, he, he only likes a certain thing in a setup. Like, he doesn't change a thing and when he, yeah, had, like, yeah. Right, he, he was like yeah it was a mistake like <laughs> it, it, he didn't like it at all and uh when i briefly wrote his table i was like yeah that's not for me see i love i love it i prefer it to the blank sheets okay it's and, weird I, I i don't want like i i never have any any protrusions or anything in my table like i don't i don't cut out the holes for the screws like i am oh, it, 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 okay. proficient enough uh, with uh, pre uh, reassembling fingerboards so i can <laughs> i can just hit the screw through correct, the correct. Like correct correct i've gotten to that level. Yeah. and <laughs> so if i need to need to change the trucks yeah after that it will ha have holes but usually that means that i'm retiring the deck or putting it on my wall or yeah, well, yeah, I or just trying a new one. And yeah, I don't want any anything in my tape. Like I, so you like I it, you like it smooth and just yes, one solid everywhere, tape. everywhere. Like I do have one thing. Like I, I like to mark my nose, so I don't mark my tail as a lot of other people do. But I mark my nose basically on the on the heel flip side on the nose. So okay. like a small triangle on that side because that it's uh, like I got that from a friend of mine who you uh, who you I think actually uh, bought some wheels from uh, uh, Hen Chris Henneman from Hard Oh Wheel. my goodness, those wheels! That's a whole other topic. Those wheels! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, he uh, that's a small sneak peek for uh, for the listeners. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm actually. Uh, uh, going to interview him uh, in the next few days. Oh, uh, awesome. so, oh! I'll be waiting yeah. for that one. Yeah, and uh, he was excited to hear your interview. Oh, great! Oh, that that's that's man. That dude is that dude's good. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and a couple of years ago he had that, and he was like, "Yeah, that's the only spot on the deck where your fingers basically never are like they that's aren't true. there." That, that, that is true. Only trade. Like no matter how you stand, you never touch that corner. So yeah, I uh, adopted that, and I've been doing that for like Ever three since. years, I think. Yeah, and like all my all my setups have that, and yeah, I always put a piece of colored skateboard grip there, and yeah, never touch that corner. I like it. I'm, I may have to try that, Yana. Yeah. You might have but, to yeah, let's... influence the whole movement on this side of the world. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk, <laughs> talk about. Uh, talk more about you and less about me. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I've uh, in in the last like in the last few years, there have been physical shops popping up all over the world, and a couple in the states. And I don't think like there was one who I think was just a pop up store in the states, the Fat Fingers one. I yes, it was like that, a, it was like inside of a mall or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And I, uh, they were trying to get a permanent space, base, but I don't think they did. And uh, there's technically the, uh, the redemption one, uh, who I think has a walk-in, uh, place where you can I'm not, walk in. I'm not sure if you. I'm not sure if they do or not. I at least they had. Like I know that they had counters with. Uh, Handboard and fingerboard trucks. Okay. But I haven't seen photos in a while. So it could be that they were just like, yeah, it's, we just use it as a workspace. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do know of, uh, of, have you heard of This Is or This yeah, the, FB? Yeah, the, that was the, the last one I was getting at because that's like the, the the only really active one in the scene uh, in, in America besides yours, I think. Yeah, they're like, they're extremely active. Yeah, because I mean, globally there are uh, a, a few more. There's 
technically the white store in uh, uh, in uh, Porto, but yeah, that one is a bit weird. Then there's the <laughs> one in uh, in Hong Kong or outside of Hong Kong where I I'm trying to pronounce it. It's something like Guai Gai Shai. I know exactly. Like... It starts with a Q. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like with a G, I, I'm not even sure how to spell it. I, I think I know what you're talking about. I, I, yeah, I think I know. And I think the only one left is the one in Australia that recently opened, I think. But other than that, I think that's all shops in the world. There are apparently some in Malaysia, but the Malaysian scene is like very close off of, from the rest of the fingerboard scene. So correct, like, correct. Yeah. I don't really know what they have. And yeah, so every time I see a new store popping up, I'm really interested because I like, I'm a local at the Aussie, so I know what, what it's like to have a store. I started fingerboarding again after a nine year break because I went into the store and don't think I would have started otherwise. And I think having that sort of place for a community is amazing. So. Uh, have you uh, have you had people uh, that didn't have anything to do with RC or fingerboarding walk into your shop and become locals and become like a part of the scene and start picking uh, picking up fingerboarding? You know, off the top of my head, that that's a that's an honest that's a honestly a good question. Off the top of my head, I don't honestly I don't know none that I can recall. It's either been one or the other you know that they walk in for the fingerboarding and they like the rc so they take up that or or like i said mm -hmm. before vice versa they like the the rc and they see the fingerboarding and they buy one and next thing you know they're you know they're on there every every time they're there uh where in texas are you located or we're, in, one of we're, the in, we're in yeah we're in dallas oh, okay the shop is located in dallas i live about an hour out but the shop is, is located in Dallas. Um, it's a really good central spot. There's, a, there's so many small towns around that area. And uh, mm -hmm. everyone, like the majority of a drive is an hour. I drive an hour there. There's, another, there's a few other guys that drive an hour. And then it's, you know, it can vary from this. We got people who live five minutes, you know, all the way up to, like I said, about an hour. And it's just, mm -hmm. it just it happens to be a good spot. Mm -hmm. And where we're at, no one really, it's... We're kind of out in the in the hood, I guess you would call it. So no one's really no one really even bugs us out there, you know. I mean, while we're doing this fingerboarding, anyways. But it, it's it's kind of nice. It's kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. So I, I I can't. I'm I'm very happy with with where we're at. Um, but like I said, I don't. I can't recall anyone coming in just off the street, not doing either. Like I said, just because we're so tucked away that the foot traffic is non-existent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that is, that's something uh, with the Aussie Berlin shop. It's like basically like in German, we would say a stone throw away uh, from one of the big like tourist streets. Okay. Like it's, uh, <laughs> uh, like it's uh, basically the big street in Kreuzberg and Kreuzberg is like the hip part of uh of berlin okay so basically if if anyone is talking about berlin they're mostly talking about kreuzberg unless they're talking about like the historical aspect and uh, the older buildings but yeah every every cool club and bar is usually in there in that and, area see that's that's awesome yeah and it's like between like the big city uh, the big street and uh, a a park where like uh, like i i worked in that area like just a couple meters away from the store and around that park there's like only restaurants like every every house around that park is a restaurant or a bar and you probably have like i don't know up to a hundred bars in like 10 minute walks like it's Sheesh. it's insane like bars and restaurants is basically the only thing that's there so <laughs> and it's like right between that that one and the big street where you come from where all the 
transportation is. So a lot of people just randomly happen to walk by. And I think that's a, that's a huge, uh, a huge part why, why it can, why it has been around for 10 years in one form or the other. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. It just, it, you know, the, the chances of more clientele walking in is just that much higher. Like I said, where we're at, it's just, it's, you're not going to be walking by us mm. anytime soon. There's no reason for you to be walking down that street. Uh, yeah. Not to say that's in the bad part. It's just, there's no reason for you to be walking down that street. <laughs> yeah. Um, and where we're at, it's, it's like this little business center and you got a, a guy who makes trophies, 37,000 automotive shops, uh, a recording studio, and a casino and us and we're tucked away in the corner and we're the we're the and we're the weird ones in the whole center <laughs> we're, the, yeah, we're, the, we're the grown-ups that go play with toys but but it's funny because all the guys that that have business businesses next door um when the weather's nice we have these big roll-up garage doors out back and we roll them up so you can you know you just get the, the air in or whatever and the, they'll walk over and they'll peep their head in and they'll they'll just kind of they'll trip out a little bit like, so this is what you guys do back here. It's like, yeah, man, what do you think we do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I think it's uh, like something underrated about uh, fingerboarding is that a lot of people, I would say our age group, like people who are a bit older in the fingerboard community and yeah. in their 30s, uh, like a lot of people that age struggle to have hobbies like i know so many people from yeah. work and stuff like all they do is like yeah. yeah i meet with friends and i listen to music and i go to bars and like i have a million weird hobbies <laughs> so I think once you get over thinking something is weird and just seeing what it is and then determining if you like it like that's when like I picked up so many weird hobbies because I was like, "Ah, oh, that seems interesting. What is that? <laughs> what are some? What are some of these weird hobbies? Uh, uh, currently, it's uh, uh, LARP, uh, live action role play. Live action, yeah, been yeah. Doing that for like seven years. Um, I've been playing Magic the Gathering uh, since '98. Sheesh, uh, you've got some time in that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I uh, do build uh, terrain for Dungeons and Dragons, so miniatures. Uh, like, uh, like I, I have a whole workbench here with foam cutters and do a lot with foam and stuff like that. Oh, that's I awesome! Juggle, I juggle. Uh, I uh, used to uh, used to play Jugger, which is a sport that's based on a low budget science fiction movie from the eighties from Australia. Okay. Like it's a really obscure sci-fi film, okay, and and it's basically LARP meets uh, football, so like American football, like it's that's, a full. See, that sounds, a, that one sounds full, the best already. Yeah, it's a full contact sport with uh, foam weapons, and it's a team sport, and that one uh, was founded in Berlin. Like there's there's like a an argument between Berlin and Hamburg who. Exactly what's the first <laughs> one, but yeah, and it's uh, yeah, I've been doing that for quite a while in Berlin, but stopped uh, uh, when I changed my job like four years ago because yeah, I didn't have time to go to practice because yeah, my job well, yeah. was in, Berlin. but yeah, well, yeah I, and, and your job and your in your other 47 hobbies, yeah, like uh, <laughs> I think like being in quarantine right now, like. I have so much more time to do like weird crafting things or yeah, or just play computer games, which is oh, also yeah. I'm sure yeah. <laughs> or or other like table like I'm huge into gaming in general, like tabletop games. Like Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um what uh how uh let I assume you're uh, also deep into RC. I was. I, I I used to be heavy into it. I mean, heavy, heavy. Uh, I used to go to Japan just so I could drive with... Oh, well, my job used to take me to Japan, but every time I went... So, so uh, to put it in terms, 
or in perspective, the the way we see the fingerboarding scene, I, I don't know if this goes across the board or not, but the way we see it, at, at least here in Texas, we see as the United States as the, we're still kind of newbies into it, not newbies, but we're still in our, our young stage, you know? And yeah. the Europe scene has more of a, a mature adult side of the fingerboarding community. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, uh, I think that, that's pretty much accurate. Yeah. And, and so it's the same way with RC uh, in Japan. The United States is still newbies to it. And the Japanese mastered it already. They've everything, all the parts you want to get, all the best tracks. I mean, everything comes from Japan. So I used to go there. Um, I used to schedule a few extra days and I was done with work just so I could go to the local track to whatever town I was in so I can hunt down the local professional driver so I could drive with them, so I could learn from them, so I can, I mean, like he could just teach me anything that he could in the couple of days that I had there. I mean, I was heavy, heavy into it. So whenever, uh, whenever the spot opened up, it was, it just made sense that the owner, you know, asked me, Hey, you know, is this something that you want to, would you be willing to help me with? Just because I know how to do it, I know how to drive, I know how to, you know, help customers with tune their cars, mm-hmm. you know, give them give them driving tips and, and and whatnot. But yeah, I used to be way way heavier into it than what I am now. Now it's the fingerboard side has just taken over. <laughs> yeah, I know a tiny bit about it. Like my brother was really into RCs when we grew up, and I. Like he he built a, a car for me, like a, I think it was called, it was from Tamiya or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 a Tamiya? Uh, yeah, Tamiya, uh, the fighter yeah. buggy. Oh, that was cool. One I, I had. And yeah, 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 and we, we, we both had, like, he had one and I, I had one. But, like, for me, it wasn't like anything I, like, it was fun to mess around with, but my brother was the one like taking it, it apart and redoing it and whatnot. Exactly, and having friends with uh, with like uh, like cars that uh, use like gasoline or like the yeah yeah real, real motor, like yeah whatever it's called in. Uh, oh, it's a whole thing. It's 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 a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So I like I. It's been on my perif- periphery, but nothing I ever like really really dope took part in. Yeah, and so uh, I was uh, a bit surprised that there is such a thing as drift RC because that's something <laughs> like like I I saw it and I was like that doesn't look like the RC tracks that I know, but <laughs> it looks cool. No, it's it's very it's. It's if not just as much or more niche than fingerboarding. Mm. It's it's so specific. It's like your car layouts have to be a certain way. The I mean the parts, your electronics, they have to be a certain kind. There's companies now that you know are just RC drift, and not only RC drift because it started off as uh, all wheel drive. You know, so all four wheels would spin. Now mm-hmm. we're all. Now we're all just real wheel drive. So we, you know, it mimics a real car more so now than yeah. before. So, which means everything gets more expensive and more, more like item specific. You know what I mean? So you can only get certain more parts. That are, yeah, exactly. You, you can only get certain parts that are going to work for what, you know, for that application. Anything else, is, it, it just won't work. Mm. But it, it's, it's a, I like it. What I do like about it is the sense of community that the fingerboarding scene has. The RC side has the exact same thing. So, mm-hmm. so the way we split it up is when you walk into the building, you're going to walk in through the RC pits first, and then, then you walk out into the track and the fingerboard plazas. Well, on any Friday night when we have a good amount of both sides, you know, we might have 10 drivers and 10 guys fingerboarding. They all hang out. The exact same way, they just do it in their own section. So, you know, the RC mm-hmm. guys will be in their pits, you know, talking, you know, tuning and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. And you can, I can sit back and enjoy that because, you know, they're with like-minded folks talking about what they want to talk about, having a good time. And then I can look out into the track and you see the fingerboarders. We have a table that goes up and down and, you know, they'll lower it and we'll pull chairs up and it's kind of our little table that we sit at or whatever. 
And, and it's the same thing. They're just kind of sitting out there talking, having a good time amongst like-minded people. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's, it's the same way in that sense as well. Yeah, uh, I know that from uh, friendly local game stores, like the the ones that are small and privately owned. Like those game stores are usually uh, they usually have board games, Magic the Gathering, and Warhammer. And it's usually they have a site where all the Warhammer kits are at, and they have a few tables where all the Magic kits are at. And yeah, it's like like. We have our side, they have their side, and sometimes someone wanders over, but I think those are more closed off than what I presume yours to have. Yours to yeah, have. yeah. ours is just because ours is in just one big open area, and you're kind of, like, you're forced to walk through the fingerboard plazas to get to the track. So just that in itself, you know, it, it I don't want to say force, because that's kind of, a, you know, it's kind of a harsh word, but it... Gives you more of the opportunity to intermingle with the other hobby, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, that 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 part of it's 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 pretty fucking cool. Because <laughs> I I, I I'm, Yana, I, I, I kid you not, I had this guy come in maybe about three weeks ago, right? He's never been there. He's been doing it since he was in high school. You know the story everyone has. We did it when we were in high school, and then yeah. and then we got girlfriends, then we got boyfriends, and then we didn't do it until we were in our thirties. We had nothing else to do, so we're like, we're going to buy a fingerboard. Same story. Yeah. Guy walks in, tells me, "Man, I got to tell my buddy about this place. This looks, you know, this is awesome. He's not going to believe me." Yada 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 yada. He calls his friend, and he's he he hangs up the phone. He's laughing. He's like, "Man, as soon as I told him, man, you need to come check this place out. It's got fingerboard and an RC drift." And he said the first thing that came out of his mind was. That sounds dumb. So, so I'm, I'm laughing because I've heard that so many times. And I kid you not, this dude walks in my doors 20 minutes later, the guy that he was on the phone with. And he looks at me, he's like, okay, this is, I, I take it back. This may not be as dumb as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> and he had yet to even pick up a car or pick up a fingerboard. You know, it's just um, people walk in and that vibe, you can just, you can, you are, you instantly feel it and you want to be part of it. No matter what it is, because we do get like it, it is a business to run. So, you know, I wish I was in a position, or or me and Platt wish we were in the position where we wouldn't have to charge people to come in. But at the same time, it's it's mm. the, the times we're in, and we're trying to have this place for everybody to come gather. So it's the the the, the bills have to be paid, you know. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, for a time, uh, the Ozzy Berlin shop had to do the same. Like they also were taking admissions uh, yeah i mean you know if you want to keep the place open it's you're in a nice controlled environment you know it's in my eyes it's it's not bad it's it's you know paying paying your fee to come in it's just supporting the community that you didn't love so much you know you know and uh um, if we had if we had a way for to not charge folks it'd be fantastic but like i said maybe maybe you will Maybe you will get there in the future. Like I said, Azzy is now in a position or like before, like uh, last week, uh, Germany uh, had a lockdown again. Yeah, so I saw in, that. Like, I saw that. Hard, hard lockdown. So, yeah, I I just hope that everything will work out in the end. Yeah, but, yeah I, before, I, I hope so. That, that's, I yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's the Mecca. Yeah. You know, that's and, what we all pilgrimage to one day, hopefully. <laughs> and and I, I hope that uh, we will have places all over the world that will be like that. I I hope that when places like yours or the DisFB one will be around for a while, those will be just as known and may just attract people like from the States specifically and people will travel from different States to, uh, to see your uh, shops. Cause that happens like all the time with the Azi shop that people from neighboring countries take like a six, eight, 10 hour road trip and spend a weekend at the shop. And that's always dope. Like I met people from so many countries and yeah. Yeah. And you get to form these friendships that what all that, that, only would have happened because you had that yeah. board in your hand, and and also you you have an instant connection with them. Like yeah, uh, 
like at, at the beginning it's usually they're at the shop i'm at the shop and like after a while you just happen to run into each other and like, hey, <laughs> yeah. want, want to play a game of skate yeah. uh, what setup do you have and like you instantly have a connection and correct, correct. I, i feel that's something that a lot of other hobbies like don't have in that way like Because I, I think fingerboarding is much more fun when you don't do it alone. Like Yes, I, 100% agree. I have a park at home and I rarely spend time there. Like usually when I spend time there, I'm trying to film something. Correct, and correct. Like just hanging out there, I only do that when I have fingerboard friends over. <laughs> That's how we it is. We usually meet at the shop because, yeah, the shop has like... Yeah, a bit more parts than I have in my... Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, you know, one or two. I'm sure one or two more parts. <laughs> yeah. How, um, far, how far are you from... I'm, I'm, just, I'm so intrigued by you. I just want to know, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I'm like about 45 minutes to an hour by oh, uh, by public transport. Like, it's... it's yeah, and, and like, it's not really far. Like, if you just uh, look at the distance, I'm like... I think I'm six kilometers or eight kilometers away. Like that's nothing. Like with oh, a car, nothing. Yeah, like with a car that, like I'm from the countryside, that would be like maybe a ten minute drive by car. Oh, when, when I uh, drive to the other shop with a car, I usually take more than an hour because, yeah, I I have to drive by the main. Uh, main train station of Berlin and then ride through basically the entire inner city up until, until the touristy part where the other shop is. So I, I drive through like the worst traffic or some <laughs> of the worst traffic. <laughs> so yeah, it's usually an hour by car and I usually go there by train or by, uh, by, uh, by U-Bahn, we call it, underground. Okay. And yeah, but since the connection isn't great, like I have to switch trains like two or three times, no matter how I like I have five routes I could take and none of them are great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, because of that, it, it takes an hour, but maybe uh, like they're building a new line that would probably cut it down half. But yeah, we'll oh, see nice. when that, nice. when that yeah, Either or it's still, it's still not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah still yeah. like one hour is perfectly yeah. okay. yeah. especially uh, when i do it on the weekend like that's usually like when i don't have anything to do like when we're not in pandemic pandemic times like my saturdays are usually quite heavily booked with like magic events like dungeons and dragons sessions like meeting with friends that don't have weird hobbies like just the <laughs> things you, you do on a, on a saturday And because a lot of the match in magic, a lot of the tournaments are on Saturdays. Okay. So when I don't have anything planned, I usually that's my day to go to the store. And yeah, I go there in like 3 p.m. in the afternoon and stay there until they kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So like when you stay that long, like. The two hours or one and a half hours it takes to get there. And oh, it's there. nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. And by the time you're done, you're, you don't even want to pick up your fingerboard anyway. So you've had a good day. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> one thing you uh, mentioned earlier was uh, that uh, the RSC world and the fingerboard world are uh, similar in, in the sense that both try to be as realistic as possible. Uh, or like try to make oh, the, the biggest yeah thing yeah out. oh for sure you know how it is uh with fingerboarding it's not only the the style of your fingerboarding but the obstacles that you're you're fingerboarding on or the plaza that you may be on or whatever it's the it's the exact same thing with the rc side it's we, you try to get the track to look as realistic with the lighting with the bushes with paint uh and then on top of that the cars themselves the, the bodies of the cars the The depth that people go into those things is just outrageous. I mean, to make them look as real as possible. Like you, there's plenty of pictures that we have from the track where they're zoomed in so well 
and the details on the shells are so well, you would never think that it was, it started off as a clear Lexan plastic shell. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it looks like a real car. Yes. Uh, spending a lot of time in the miniature world, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. About. Exactly. Yeah. It's insane what people can do with oh, the passion. Man. It, um, it, what, that's exactly what it is with the passion. What, what scale are those RC cars at, or are they in a in a scale that you could reasonably do something where you combine fingerboarding and RC? Yeah, yeah. So the so what we drive is one ten scale, and mm -hmm. whenever you stand the, the board up, you know I don't know what scale fingerboarding would fall under. Like it it started, I think also uh, similar because. Like back, uh, back when Berlin Woods first started, I think they were a hundred millimeters long, so ten centimeters, and a okay. board, and a skateboard was around a meter, I think. So it was also, yeah, about a ten scale. Yeah, about. Yeah, but I, I think it changed boards, over. Right. Yeah, I mean now now that we have these stubby boards and whatnot too, for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it it uh, it uh, in that sense, it's the same. Um, people go, you know, they want to take that extra step just to make it realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one thing that both sides can appreciate from the other side. So I, I think you should really try to do a, like a, a track that you can lift uh, and put it on the rack to fingerboard at and try to have like street gaps and yeah. So, so it's funny. It's funny you said that because there are spots on the track that we film on that you, if, when you're just standing there looking at it and driving, you could never tell that fingerboarders get on there and, and fingerboard. Like there's, there's, there's little spots on the track that we cool. we're still work. There's still some that we're working on. We're going to pour some cement spots and whatnot, but mm -hmm. you know, just for filming purposes, we take our, the one thing we do take serious over here is our filming, mm -hmm. um, our filming and, and style. We push that a lot. Or well, I don't know if we push it a lot. It's just what we tend to gravitate towards. Yeah. And it's, so, it's part of that realism. And in my eyes, it's part of that realism, you know? So I think we need to see a, a full part from locals at your at your shop. Oh, that, that hey, shh. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming. That's in, that's in the works. Yeah, we'd love to see, uh, to see that. We uh, we used to I used to do them every now and then on uh, on my YouTube page and if you scroll down we used to do these things called boogie fingers and I it was didn't know that it, you also had a YouTube page oh yeah, yeah I mean it's you know I have all of you know three followers and it's probably all family members but yeah same can... <laughs> I, I think I have four followers on my <laughs> private YouTube account but like I I just use it as a, as a place to dump all my edits that I spent time on and don't want to... Don't want to say them anymore. Yeah, so, like, if I want to show it to someone, I just know where to look and then... <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 Um, if you scroll through a well, while, you can find some old ones, some old uh, edits, and they're called Boogie Fingers. And I, I really do need to pick those up again. And all it was was every Friday night, I got clips of all the locals, and we made a full edit of everyone who was there for that evening. And then mm. it gets it gets everybody excited to see their footage up online too, you know. Like, yeah, so the same when we do around. a spot of the day. Yeah, when when we do a spot of the day and Timo calls out, okay, Jana, do a trick. Uh, and Borne, you're next. Think of something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's always always cool to see uh, what other people come up with and seeing it online later. And oh, for sure, for sure. See, but you guys yeah. see that? That's a, that's a hell of a lineup, though. You know, Yana, do this. Julian, do this. That's that's sheesh. Yeah, like uh, there was one time where I was uh, playing a game of skate with like six other people, I think, and we were all standing around like one of the desks in the front of the shop and. Or like drinking beer, having a good time, and I won that uh, that game of skate, and then we played another, and when we played the the second one, I was like, "Huh, everything but me is on the black uh, is on the Berlinwood team." <laughs> like every single one except for me that was a Berlinwood rider. <laughs> that is and, nuts. And like 
I'm not saying I'm I'm better than them. Like I I lost way more than I won. Hey, a win, a win is a win. A win is a win. Okay. <laughs> and and like like we usually like we play these for fun and we don't care if if we win right. or not. We sure. just care that the the trick you do is clean. Like yeah. if you set a trick, it has to be clean. And everything else, or like uh, everything else, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much how we do it too. But yeah, the yeah. the average rider is probably a Berlin Wood rider at the other Berlin shop. See, that's just that's just crazy. You know, we there's a there's a group of us planning a trip uh, up to Berlin. Hopefully, hopefully by the time this trip happens, all this you know this nonsense is over. Yeah, hope, hope so as well. Like, I definitely uh, hit me up uh, when it's about to happen. Like, oh, the, you, for sure. You know that'll happen because uh, we plan on being at we plan on being at Aussie until you guys are just sick and tired of us. <laughs> so I'll look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's you know that's that's uh, I told my wife you know like last year I told her for my I'm 37 now. It's like for my 40th. I'm going back to Berlin. Nobody can come with me except fingerboarders. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah. thinking. She said, you know what? I'm going with you, but I won't even see you. That's fine. <laughs> Pick up. That, that's something I think uh, non-fingerboarder people don't really understand. Like I, I've seen quite a lot of people who come to Berlin and bring their uh, their partner. And usually that means that they're in berlin berlin for a week and they get to spend one day at the shop correct and maybe one evening or something like that because like when a place like that is so rare that when you are there you want to spend as much time there as oh possible. yeah 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 i mean you gotta that's why we you know as especially with all the plazas and all the places it's you got to be there a few days just to get a thorough enjoyment of the whole place you know yeah yeah that's true like when uh when the guys from uh sorry for fingerboarding uh were in town uh they were like yeah um, we're gonna spend one week just doing fingerboard stuff and one week not doing any fingerboard stuff at all just so that are non fingerboarding family members are happy <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta spread it around. You gotta spread it around. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I'm thinking ahead of time. Like I'm just gonna go with fingerboarding friends, and yeah. uh, you know, I mean, it, it, that's that's you know, I do you know, all jokes aside, when we do go, I I, I thoroughly want to just enjoy it. You know, we want to, yeah, you know, we want to stay close if possible and just be merged in it. You know, we want to we want to feel like a local by the time we get there and. I, I I think we're so easy going over here that I think we'll, we'll, we'll blend it. Yeah, and that, <laughs> like that happened with so many people. Like there are like honorary locals all over the world. Like um, that's awesome. See, that's awesome. Like uh, Mauro uh, from Argentina. Like he yeah. was in, in Berlin for like a couple weeks, uh, like around the the last fast fingers, and like by the time he left, he was one of us. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it just seems it, it's the it, it's just the vibes you know just looking at the videos the vibes come through it and you just yeah. want you just want you just want to be there and that's that's what i hope you know people get when they see our videos you know oh yeah. man this, this place looks cool i just want to go hang out yeah, it, it does look really cool that's why i wanted to do, do this interview because i was like yeah i think that's the place how how i would like it yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. We thank you. We we get we get a lot of compliments on it. We've had a, you know, we've had people from out of the state come, and we have a couple of we have a group of friends down from Houston, who uh, who they 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 are they're good vibes family for sure. They they support us since day one. And have uh, any? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go on. Go on. Have, have any of the? Uh, I would say uh, more. Uh, how, how do I phrase this? Oh, have any of the famous fingerboard riders from Texas uh, showed up at your store? Yes. Um, so, you know uh, Chubby, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm basically talking about Chubby and Kelsey. 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, Chubby is one of the Houston guys, so he's one of our he's good vibes family off the top. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been down a few times. Uh, he actually has an edit on. Uh, I'll send you the link when we're done. He oh, has, yeah, definitely. He has an edit when uh, he met up with our friend New down in Houston, who runs Bread Apparel, and they they documented the drive down and then the session. And after at the end of every session, we have. Uh, a, a potato style session, right? So this is fully just, th- this is all inspired from oak. <laughs> so we hung overhead lights. So whenever the the proper session goes, you know, we turn the, the we turn the room lights off, we have our overhead lights on. So you just get that nice glow. Oh, nice. Of, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, uh, Chubby did a whole edit where it, it goes from our regular, you know, your regular day session and then it transfers over to the night session. And the, I mean, he caught our vibe on film spot on. You have to check it out. It's it's really good. Uh, Kelsey hasn't made it down yet. Uh, she moved out of the state for college. Yeah, I thought uh, She was, uh, Kelsey was lovely enough to be the, the, the contact person that I needed to be able to carry Black River. So she's, oh, cool. she's, she's family for sure already. And there's, a, there's also another guy named Tricky, who uh, he's been fingerboard. He's been making fingerboards for, I mean, for years, and makes good quality, affordable fingerboards. And uh, he comes down every now and then too. Those are probably going to be the three names that people know. Besides, uh, oh, cool. Uh, if you're in the Dallas area, you're going to know the name Gone Fingerboarding for sure. That's yeah. a, that's a company that I write for. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, I, I heard of that company. Yeah, that's real cool to hear. Um, yeah, it's it's I, nice, you know. You get when you get love, especially from the people like you said, the famous people. Uh, when you get love from them, it's it's a it's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> are there uh, like Texan fingerboard com- uh, fingerboard companies? Like, are there, there companies that do boards or wheels? Yeah, in Texas? yeah, yeah. So there's a there's the, the the few that I know. I mean. I'm sure there's, you know, a thousand of them out there, but the main ones I know are Gone Fingerboarding, who I ride for, uh, Tricky, uh, Death Ply, this cat out of Houston who makes really good boards, and if I'm not mistaken, I mean, there might be more, I just, I, I, that come to mind, that's, that's all I can think of. As far as wheels or anything like that, there's no one that does that. We just have people who are making uh boards at the time there was a kid named moisty making some some wheels and uh, they were okay uh but he kind of just he kind of just fell off so i don't know really, I don't really yeah and wheel, wheels take uh take time to to perfect like uh, that that's something i talk with uh hennemann from hard sphere wheels like he's one of my good friends and we yeah we talk about that and other stuff all the time and yeah that's why I wanted to have him on in the future. His so wheels are the, the uh, research and yeah, trial and error. Because that's, that is one that I want to. I'm sorry, I dropped my headphone there. I have no idea where it went. His wheels are so damn good. <laughs> they are. I mean, do you, you have can, white you ones or color ones? No, I have white ones. I have the smaller yeah. white ones. Those are the best ones. Oh my, I'm just in love with those wheels. They're they're light like a plastic wheel. They're grippy like a nice urethane wheel. They have a nice squeak. I mean, they are fucking perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they are. And I, I, uh, I've been trying to get this. Uh, I've been trying to carry oaks for a long time. And uh, we finally got them. And I was so hyped to get them in. I got a set of the M's in, that new shape. I really wanted to try oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't put tried them, that one. I put them on, and as much as I love them, I had to put I had to put those ones back on. They're just they're just they're just fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, when when I was at uh, Pateo last year, uh, I bought uh, two sets of oaks uh, from Ricardo because I mean I was there, so might oh, as yeah. well. Buy something. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like. At, like after a few weeks, I traded both away. Like, I there was a time where I only rode oaks for 
at least a good two years. But like now coming back to them, they're just a bit too grippy for me. They're they're grippy. They're a fantastic wheel. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I am. Like they I'm don't wobble. Ex- they they oh, don't a, ferry flip. They no, are. No, they're grippy. fantastic. They're fan. Fantastic wheels, and I am extremely honored to be able to just have his wheels in my storefront. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. But oh my gosh, you know, I just can't. I, I just I can't turn away from these. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same, same for me. I have uh, I have various sets of his, but I have uh, two from the current iteration of it. Yeah. They're great. Uh, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I I'm going to shoot a couple a uh, couple rapid fire questions your way now. Okay. So the way I do it is uh, I ask you them as uh, in a row, and we try to not spend too much time on each question. But if we spend a bit more time, that's fine by me. Okay. Yeah. So um, because uh, the reason I wanted to start that now is. The first question is always, do you have a favorite wheel? <laughs> <laughs> you, you already know that. You already know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, do you have a favorite deck and or shape? I do. Uh, favorite deck, uh, always gone fingerboarding. And uh, he has a shape that uh, he makes that's you can only get through us, and he calls it the Digit Crusher. And it's, it's like a... Uh, it's more of a cruiser shape, mm-hmm. but I swear it makes my switch flips just magical. Hands down, best shape ever. Um, do you have a favorite trick on flat? Switch heel. Oh. Yeah, I think either love it or hate it. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's, it's, a, it's my go-to. It's, I've... I've I, I love, love, I just love that trick. <laughs> uh, favorite trick on an obstacle? Uh, kickflip back tail. That's a classic, yeah. Yeah, um, it's, it's it just looks good. Yeah. Uh, favorite song right now? <laughs> right now? Oh man, I, I I've I've got so many. Right now, yes, I think I couldn't answer these questions. Yeah, that <laughs> one's a tough. One. You know, and this is the one I knew that comes up every now and then. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just have, I have so many. It, it probably have to be. I honestly, I can't even think of one. There's just, I hit that playlist and I just let it ride. <laughs> <laughs> I I can say mine, and then you have a bit more uh, to think about. Currently, oh. mine is six 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 goats carry my chariot from butcher. It's uh, an amazing black metal, yeah, black speed. Okay. Black okay, and roll okay. track. Black okay. and roll track. Yeah. Um, well, mine right now, well, I guess right now what I've been listening to the most is, uh, is a local guy from Houston. His name's Don Tolliver. And uh, he has a song called Wasted. And that, that's pretty much been on my nonstop playlist. Nice. Um, outdoor or indoor fingerboarding? Outdoor all day. Um, what do you do for a living? I install dental equipment. Yeah, I think you need to elaborate a bit more. Okay. <laughs> so I install all the equipment that when you go into your dentist and you sit down on that chair and he turns on all those machines that give all that pain, I install all that stuff. So I install dental chairs, the x rays. Uh, anything that different, different differentiates a dentist's office from a regular medical office, yeah. I installed all that. So, are you? Uh, do you go to the dentist yourself regularly, or? I do. I okay. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I need to do that more. You have <laughs> to, man. You have to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your favorite obstacle? Right now, I can't get enough of that, that Katha, that, uh, the green ledge. Yeah, that, that bench is amazing. God, that yeah. thing is, it just sounds so good. Yeah, I've, been, I've been meaning to pick one up for so long, and every time I'm like, ah, but I don't fingerboard at home with an obstacle anyway. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that, it's, uh, it's really nice. I like it. I, I got a few of them in, and they went out really fast, but it's, you should grab one. It's well worth it, even for the house. 
Yeah. Yeah, they, they're really good. I, I like them when I grab them at the Aussie shop. Um, what's your Instagram name? Uh, my Instagram handle is goodvibesfb. Uh, do you prefer concrete, wood, or granite? Uh, concrete. Uh, switch or regular? Switch. Or, uh, or uh, switch. Uh, do you have hobbies outside of fingerboarding? I think we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, RC, drifting, and uh, that's about it. Uh, do you have a favorite fingerboard video? I have, does a, a group of fingerboard videos count as my favorite? <laughs> I have, There's a local guy named Juan, and uh, every video he makes, it's, it's always better. It, it, no one, no, a lot of people aren't going to know him because he's a local guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, fantastic editing, fantastic footage. It's it's always really good. What's as his far Instagram as, name? Is is lost my nut? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll send you all these links. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I I, uh, I don't mean to make the answer so long, but. I came into the, the fingerboarding scene so late. Like I did it when I was in high school and whatnot. But when I got serious, I was so behind the curve that all these like pissing fingers and all these, they've already been out. So I never really, I never really came up on them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. everything, everything that I know is newer. Like I've gone back and I've watched, obviously I've watched all the pissing fingers. I, I, I got to pay respects, you know? Yeah. But uh, uh, as far as like favorite that stuck out like that, it, it, it'd have to be Juan's. Yeah, yeah. Just followed him. Um, if you could get one Black River Park, which one would it be? The I don't know the name of it. The newer one with the long kinked blue rail. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's the uh, G fifteen. But I, I, I'm not quite sure if it even has an official name. But yeah, I, I know which one you mean. That one looks fun. We have a G, if I'm not mistaken, it's a G5. We have a G5 down here. The, the it's, plaza or? Uh... The, the plaza. It's the, yeah. it's, it's either G5 or G7. It's the one with the... the... Yeah, I think it's the G7 plaza because we have the same one at the Aussie. Yeah, yeah. The one with the, the bank and the rail off to the side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's one of the most famous plazas, I think. It's... Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people bought that one, I think. It it's a it's a really good small plaza, like yeah. Yeah, it is for good. what for what it is, the size is it's perfect. Yeah, good bang for your buck. Uh heel flip or kick flip? Kick flip. Uh favorite fingerboarder. F uh, I have two favorite fingerboards. <laughs> I'm gonna make all yeah, sure. questions impossible for you. Uh <laughs> Gio, a really good friend of mine, Gio, who runs Gone Fingerboarding, and Maxi, uh, one of the riders for him. He goes under Maxi FB. Uh, Maxi's just because he, I, 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 Maxi's that guy who I just swear would give Nico a run for his money, you know, like on the style side of it. He's so okay. good, so consistent. And Gio is who I call the. He's he's the guy who fathered our style. Like we did, okay. the, we were you know your your regular popping real high, flipping real high, until Gio came around and he kind of you know he sat us down and said, "Hey guys, that's that's not how it's done." <laughs> I mean, it, it used to, that uh, to be that way in the German scene as well. Like looking back, the old like river ramps were like launch ramps. Like. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And everything everything's just mellowed down a little bit, but those. Those two are my favorite fingerboarders. Those are the guys I I watch the most. And uh, speaking of uh, Nico Frank, uh, another uh, sneak peek. I will also talk to him in the future. That's uh, another good one. I can't wait for. Yeah. Um, what was your uh, first event? Or yeah. Uh, my first event was uh, Texas Rendezvous uh, huh. about three years ago. Um, we went in. We uh, we heard about it. Uh, Good vibes was, was was fairly new still. Um, mm -hmm. We had our we had our crew. Um, the the thing about Good vibes is we we make it a point to 
travel together. So we're not so much as a team as we are a a collective, you know. And yes, yeah, uh, same with with Aussie. There, yeah, there is it, an Aussie team, better. but but yeah. Uh, like we we locals doesn't matter if you're on the Aussie team or not like we are one family and we travel yeah, exactly. together and... yeah exactly and uh, uh we went down to a Texas rendezvous and uh yeah we had a good time we had no idea that the community was that big or it you know that's how large it was it was just we walked in it was pretty amazing i think that's something that happens to a lot of people on their first event when it's like one of the bigger ones yeah uh do you prefer uh homemade ramps or bought ramps homemade um what's the favorite food uh ramen <laughs> there's actually an amazing ramen place like a couple meters from the other building shop away keep it down say. because when, when i'm there in a few yeah. years we're going on me okay don't forget definitely definitely um, loose or tight or medium trucks? Uh, medium. Uh, what was your last personal NBD? So the last trick you did that you were really stoked on that was the first for you? Oh, man. Fakie. Yeah, fakie. Three shove. Would that be fakie? Would that be? Yeah. Fakie, three shove to switch front tail. Yeah, fakie three shove the switch front tail. Ah, okay, yeah, that, that's a cool trick. I I like doing that. Yeah, it looks it, it just looks it, it just it's it just looks nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, I love doing it regular as well. So front nose. Yeah, it's, it's oh, a cool like, trick. yeah, yeah. I need to try that. Yeah. Uh, do you have one setup or do you prefer multiple setups? I have multiple. I have right now. I maybe I may have four or five. I keep a, uh, I keep a gun put together all the time, uh, yeah. and I have a few, a few other ones that you know, a few homies that send me decks that you know I just want to keep. I have my flint. A, a flint stays put together for sure. Same. Like I have one flint that I haven't changed in like two years. I think. <laughs> oh, see, goodness! I did, I just I I. I wrestled with the idea of putting it together because I've, I've I only have one, and they're not the easiest to come across. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I kind of wrestled with the idea that do I want to put it together or not? But I put it together like a year ago, and I felt so nervous that I was going to scratch it or anything, and I took it apart. But <laughs> and now I put it back together, and I, I yeah, it, it'll stay put together. And uh, I mean, Lush uh, said in an interview I did with him a couple weeks ago that. He always likes people to write, actually write his decks, and yeah, that's that's why he makes them. So, yeah, and they're uh, in such such good quality. Yeah, but I I have to admit I have one uh, I have one preet uh, that that Peter made for me, and uh, like I set it up and it was so fucking nice. It was like I I I can't. I can't. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 I, I put that one on the wall. It, it happened. I, I, I was thinking about uh, trying to get another one of his with a le less elaborate graphic. Uh, yeah. Just one so that you I'm, might I'm, scratch I'm, it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what's your least liked trick in a game of skate? Or what, which one? Do you hate when someone does it in a, a game of skate? Yeah. Front side flip, for sure. Okay. And just regular front side flip, because mine are just atrocious. Okay. And big heels. Big heels just suck so bad. <laughs> okay. I, I like both of those. <laughs> I, I suck so bad at those. Those are the, there's a guy I play with all the time, a buddy of mine named Doug. And that's with that big heels of, he throws out and oh, he knows every variation of it. I'm like, well, there's three letters. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you prefer plastic or urethane wheels? Uh, urethane. Uh, what's your favorite be beverage? My favorite beverage is Dr. Pepper. Yeah. I don't think I ever had Dr. Pepper, I think. 
You've never had a dark pepper? Yeah, it's not really common in, in Germany. We're going to have to get you some. Yeah. Okay, um, it's, it's not right for you to be living without having Dr. Pepper in your system. <laughs> um, uh, who are your sponsors? I don't have any sponsors. I, uh, I man I'm more of the team manager for Gone Fingerboard. Oh, oh okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> just because with the, with the shop and whatnot, um, and mm -hmm. I could, you know, I could care less about sponsorships or whatnot. I, I, I my position and what I, and that I hold with gone fingerboarding, it's, it's good enough for me. You know, it's, I get to gather up the guys, make sure that when we're taking our team trips that everything's lined up and we have somewhere to stay and everyone has something to eat and we have sessions planned and whatnot. And yeah. being the older guy in the group, it's, it's, <clears throat> you know, it's, if I don't do it, no one's going to do it. And I'll be damned if I'm going to be sleeping on the floor somewhere. So yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, like my back will hurt for the next yeah, three days. Exactly. And, and my, the goal is we, so, uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm sorry to drag it on further, but no worries. We, we, uh, with gone fingerboarding, we try to. So if the way we see it is gone fingerboarding and good vibes are sister companies. You know, we we mm -hmm. you know we we piggyback off of each other. We move we move yeah. together. So we try to treat we try to treat it as much as a real skate company, but obviously in fingerboarding. So we. We take our team trips. We have our team manager. You know, we we, cool. we we do things as far as as far as we can to give you that fingerboarding or that that skate team feel. You know what I mean? That's cool. I don't think so, I I heard yeah, of the I team. I don't, anyone, I don't I don't know. I don't know if anyone else does it. Uh, uh, Kelsey, we we're talking. Uh, she had that. I don't know if you've seen those cut documentary the little series that she was doing yeah yeah I did, yeah uh we were in houston to do one of those and uh because she did one on my buddy and uh she was the first one to tell us she said you know i noticed that you guys are one of the first companies that treat it like a like a skate team you know you guys do things the way i think should be done and you know that was a pat on the back because that's it that's truly our most important thing that we go for you know like i said we want like it, at the beginning of the year obviously when covid's not going on that kind of just throw a wrench in all the gears but yeah you know we try to plan our trips you know all right guys this year we're gonna do four trips and you know they might all be to houston just because houston is the, the only other city in texas that has a fingerboarding community mm -hmm. but you know we we go uh we on our way there we'll try to stop at different spots just to get footage there when we go there we we get our footage there uh we we have our day that we actually go skate and skate in. So we get our skateboarding footage and, you know, we do the dinner thing. We do the long night sessions and try to treat it, like I said, as much as a company as possible, especially to break that's, up, that's cool. you know, we're all adults and we all go to work our 40 hours a week. So, you know, a few times a year where you get to break off and, and be kids for a little bit with a bunch of other that, guys that want to be kids. That's really cool. It's important, man. It's a, it's a healthy mind for sure. <laughs> Uh, do you, or who would be your dream sponsors? You know what? I, I, I honestly, I'm not, I, I think I don't have a dream sponsor. You know, I think where I'm at, I'm, I'm really good. Yeah. I'm, uh, yes, same for me. I, I, yeah, I think when you're in a position to where you can give back more so than than, than receiving, yeah. I, I think you're doing good. I, I, I know, I, I don't want to be greedy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy yeah. with. Putting fake, putting smiles at other people's faces. Yeah, the, the most important thing for me about being sponsored is like I'm part of a of a team that I think are all rad. Like I, like I, I haven't met any of my teammates because they're all from Canada. So yeah. I work for Five Luck. Yeah. But like we we message all the time and we do edits together and yeah, just love being a part of that. And it's just a bonus that I don't have to pay for my decks. But to be honest, <laughs> in fingerboarding, you, you don't wear out the deck as fast as you do in skateboarding. No, not, not at all. And, and, and just because your sponsor doesn't mean you're not going to spend money on decks. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I have so many different brands. Like, 
like even even the ones that are not on my wall because they're not like nice enough or like beautiful enough like yeah. <laughs> even, even in my in my box of like old decks that i used or tried i probably still have like 10 companies or something like that no oh, yeah um, i wouldn't doubt it i wouldn't doubt it yeah i think yeah. I, I think if you're uh, like i said if you're in a position to 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 make folks happy yeah I, i'm good yeah and and yeah like i said i would be you know having the shop and whatnot i really don't need I'm happy, bro. I'm happy, yeah. bro. Uh, do you prefer uh, 32 or 34 millimeter trucks? 32. 32 millimeter trucks on 34 millimeter decks. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, What's your favorite account to follow on Instagram? So who do you like seeing content of the most? I, lo I like seeing the ASI guys. Uh, just, just because, man, you know, it's always a fucking party. <laughs> yeah, uh, I used to, I used to really enjoy uh, Danko. Do you remember that guy? I don't know his real name, but his Instagram handle was Danko, and he rode for Yellowwood for a little bit. Yeah, I remember, but I haven't seen him in. Oh, I haven't seen him on Instagram for a while. He was one of the guys I look forward to seeing. Uh, now it's. It's it's just my you know I, I have a huge love for all the European scenes so anything that I, I I wake up and I refresh my my feed and anything coming out of the European side I'm always I'm always stoked on. Cool. Um, and who would be your favorite overall thing about company? As far as aesthetic and quality. And, uh, and whatnot, it, it'd have to be Flynn. Yeah. It, 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 he, he has it. He has it down really well. <laughs> he, he does. It's it's the the best like overall design company with like a like a a distinct look and like everything just fits like. It's correct. You can tell. You yeah. Everything. For, yeah, I I agree. His aesthetic just is through, so Yeah. His uh, his uh, his grip on that mystery pack that uh, made the black powder be with you or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so subtle and so perfect. It's it's just it's it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the decks that he like, he, I think it's the same design he did uh, for a bunch of people at the last uh, Fast Fingers. Like he just gave them away. You can buy them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> also. Uh, um, made a bl black powder be with you, but uh, yeah, th those also look really cool. Yeah. And uh, one last question: um, When did you start fingerboarding, and what got you into it? Uh, I broke my ankle skateboarding when I was about man, how old was I? About fifteen, so about twenty twenty three years ago or so. Um, picked up a fingerboard and, you know, I, I kind of just dilly dallied around, like people say, uh, with mm -hmm. it, you know, nothing, nothing real serious. I did learn all my basic stuff, like, you know, kick flip, uh, tray flip, fakey flip, all your basic stuff with no style whatsoever, you know, just you flip it and you, and you land it. Yeah. Um, and then I stopped for about. 15 years, you know, 10 or 15 years. I always had a fingerboard around, so I kind of just, every now and then, just kind of flip it around, but never Same really... Same for me when I had my nine-year break. Yeah, yeah, you just really don't, you know, you kind of just, you see it, you play with it, and you put it right back. Yeah. And then it wasn't until the track thing started growing, and uh, we just all got right back into it. And it's been, fuck, it's been nonstop ever since. <laughs> That's really awesome to hear. Yeah, I really hope that there uh, will be more shops uh, popping up uh, all over the world in the future. And I hope that uh, yours and uh, this FB one will will grow over the years and yeah, will turn out to be meccas of themselves. Yeah, you know, I hope so too. You know, all the luck, best of luck to those guys out in Colorado, this FB, uh, like you said. Uh, I agree with you. It's a beautiful thing to see more brick and mortar uh, fingerboard shops pop up, you know, somewhere you can just walk in, pick up what you need and turn around and play with it. It's uh, 
it's not an easy yeah. thing to do, and you, you're not gonna you're not gonna get rich by it by any means by, by any stretch of the. the yeah, no. <laughs> I, I'm I'm good friend with Timo. He's not made of money. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you know, people who uh, you could tell that he's about the the community, you know, and that's yeah, and he, he makes it work somehow. Yeah, yeah, and 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 thank thank God that he does. Yeah, uh, like when 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 Black River closed the uh, Black River store back then, like it was a whole. I don't think this will work, but he made it work. And he, and he's making it work. Yeah, uh, so it's I, been I, I t- three years, I think. Sheesh, really already? Two, three. I think I think it's three years. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, he's doing it. Like I said, I mean, I I. I don't know if I bug him a lot, but you know, <laughs> you know, every now and then I'll, I'll shoot him a message just to, just to let him know, just because I know, you know, someone behind the scenes, you know, it's nice to hear, Hey man, you know, well, a lot of respect to what you do, especially on this side of the world. Cause it's, you know, we, we model ourselves a lot after ASI and, you know, at least try, obviously we're not, you know, I'm not the ex world champ, but <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I think it goes to say with, about folks that just want to get people together. You know, it was, uh, um, you know, I don't know if you want to add this or not. You know, just this is just for conversation sakes. But, you know, when we closed down the first time, we had a lot. I had a lot of people, like a lot of people's parents messaging me. Like, hey, do you guys think you will ever open up again? And not only just for the fingerboarding, more so for the, more so for the RC side. Because when we had mm-hmm. to close down, the RC side was the more prevalent side. So these parents were calling me and, you know, one of them told me, you know, I, uh, there's this local kid who goes up there and he was telling me, Hey, she was telling me, Hey, uh, um, you know, let me know if you guys are going to open up, even if you're going to be further from where you were at, let me know because, you know, before you guys, my son had problems, you know, he had, you know, he wanted to hurt himself and he was depressed and he, it was hard mm-hmm. for him to find friends and people made fun of him and picked on him. And, yeah, you know, people can be dickheads. Yeah. And uh, this is, you know, like I said, I don't know if you want to leave this off. This is me just talking to you. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, she uh, that made me think about it. You know, that really made me sit back and my wife read the messages and she was the one who kind of lit the fire under my ass. She said, you know, if, if the track thing doesn't ever happen again, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, what do you mean? What am I going to do? Like an online store or something? She's like, no, you know, what are you going to do to open up a place? You know, I didn't even know that so many kids, you know, depended on it for just to feel comfortable somewhere, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, just to be able to give that back to the community, what, no matter what it is, like I used to tell people, it's, it's, a, it's $10 to come in. I don't care if you want to come in to fingerboard, if you want to come in and RC, if you want to come in and practice a magic routine or work on your homework or whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you, if you can come here and be comfortable, just being yourself, by all means, that's what we're here for. You know, the RC and the, on the fingerboarding side is the, a huge plus, but that kind of space where it gives people the freedom to be themselves and no matter what you do, yeah. it's, uh, it, it's pretty awesome to see. Yeah, it's important to have those places. Yeah, I, I yeah. believe so. Yeah, I I think that's where uh, we will wrap up. Um, thank you so much for your time. This it was really cool to hear to hear about that because no. I I didn't know a lot about your story. And like I said, I follow pretty much every every time I hear that someone's opening uh, or trying to open a store, a physical store, my ears pop up. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, I'm, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for you know for letting me be part of this. Uh, when we chatted before, you know, I, I let you know that I know the lineup of the people that you've interviewed prior to this, and we don't have we don't hold a candle to these people, but we're extremely I'm extremely humbled and honored that you asked me to be part of this because what you're doing is fantastic, and if we can just to be part of it, it's I can't thank you enough, Lydia. Yeah, as, as long as, uh, as long as, like, I just want the people who I talk to that they represent some sort of fingerboarding. That, like, doesn't matter if they're the best rider in the world or 
the most stylish rider or one with the best clips or do the best product. Like as long as you are passionate about fingerboarding and do something where it's worth talking about, those are the kinds of people I want to talk to. No, we gr I greatly appreciate the time for sure. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for listening. And yeah, you will catch me in the next episode. Bye.